If you look at uh, the world paper industry at this stage, about 100 million tons of uh, graphic or printing and writing paper gets produced. Uh, that's been declining at about 1.5% a year. My view is that's going to continue. It might even speed up a little. Um, then you also have newsprint, uh, roughly 25 million tons gets produced a year. And that's been declining at 5 uh, to 6% a year. I also think that's going to continue. However, there's the other side of the story, which is um, a container board, uh, where there's a, a market of about 210 million tons, and tissue, another market of about three, uh, 35 million tons. Those two markets are, container boards growing at about 2.5%, tissue is growing at 3.5%. So for me, if you look at the overall picture, printing and writing, newsprint, continue to decline. But all that decline is going to be taken up and actually exceeded by the growth on the container board and on the tissue side. And then, where is paper still changing the way that other industries are working? Uh, for me, the, uh, probably the main topic here is the, the environmental story and the issues um, that are, are being raised about, for example, plastics. And you probably heard the, the statement that uh, by 2050 there will be the weight of plastic in the ocean will actually exceed the weight of fish. So what we are seeing is that there's a lot of movement to uh, actually reduce the consumption of plastic, a ban of plastic bags some places, and a strong move from fast mover consuming, uh, f fast move, um, mover consuming good um, companies which are actually trying to, to move more into a, a paper packaging um, aspect. And I do think that that's going to continue. The paper industry is very well set uh, with um, uh, advances being made in barrier coating technology to actually support uh, these FMCG companies in terms of achieving those goals to uh, move to predominantly paper-based packaging. Okay, and then what are some of the other potential uses that the byproducts of paper production have? Uh, I think the, the two main areas, the one is in, in the area of binders. Um, as we uh, mentioned, uh, the lignin that actually binds the fibers of the tree together, uh, at this stage predominantly get, gets burnt and gets used for its um, energy value. However, those binders um, are perfectly suited to replace oil-based binders uh, in a, specific, a couple of specific examples there, replacing starch in the paper industry. Um, we find that there are um, uh, opportunities in the foundry industry where molasses are being used to um, uh, bind the casting sand. A lot of work being done there to, to actually bring ling lignans into that uh, sphere. And then a specific um, area in South Africa which we're working on is if you look at um, uh, products like grinding discs where the, the abrasive component is bound together by an oil-based uh, binder at this stage, very good progress in terms of using uh, a lignin-based binder. And then the second aspect is in terms of the sugars, the, the complex um, C4, uh, C5 sugars that um, are available in that liquor circuit. We are working in terms of extracting those. It gives us two benefits. Uh, the direct benefit to SAPI is that it allows us um, for the same recovery boiler capacity to make more pulp and that obviously has a direct uh, commercial benefit. Without a capital investment you actually get more capacity. But those sugars are also the basic building blocks, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, of complex polymers so you can make effectively all the plastics and oil-based um, products that, that are made from those sugars. And then one specific example there is xylitol, the artificial sweetener uh, that has been used in the market. We're doing, uh, making quite a lot of progress in terms of um, uh, being able to extract the xylitol out of those liquor streams and there's a, a very rapidly growing market for those xylitols. What is the company's future beyond Vision 2020? Uh, I think it's not going to be a radical change in direction. Um, I do think there are a couple of um, aspects become more renewable, more, more sustainable. Um, I see us as the, the building block to the circular economy. The fact that we our raw material is a renewable 
green product, uh, which can actually substitute many, many non-renewable products um, in the industry, means that we'll continue to focus on that and how do we substitute some of these non-renewable products with a tree-based or a, a forest uh, product-based um, um, element. Um, I think the, 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 the final aspect in that regard um, is uh, at this stage, we're not adding value to the complete tree. We're extracting some of the fiber, we're starting to look at the lignans and talking about the sugar, but the focus is going to be how do we add um, uh, the full potential value to the complete tree, uh, make sure that nothing gets wasted, nothing goes into landfill. And I think we're very well on track to be achieving that at the moment.